Do you feel anxious or nervous around lots of people? If you do, then there is something really interesting about you that you don't know. Something absolutely amazing. Today, we're getting into a topic that's both fascinating and deeply personal. Why chosen ones like you often struggle to be around large groups of people. You see, being a chosen one isn't about superiority or special privileges. It's a unique spiritual journey that comes with its own set of challenges. One of the most significant hurdles you might face is the difficulty of navigating crowded spaces and busy social environments. In this video, we'll explore the reasons behind this phenomenon and offer insights to help you understand and embrace your distinctive path. Energetic protection and boundaries. Given your heightened sensitivity, establishing strong energetic boundaries becomes paramount. Think of these boundaries as an invisible shield that protects your energy field from external influences. Without them, you're like a sponge absorbing everything around you, both positive and negative. Creating and maintaining these boundaries requires conscious effort and practice. Visualization techniques can be incredibly effective. Before entering a crowded space, take a moment to imagine a protective bubble surrounding you. This bubble can be any color or texture that feels right to you, perhaps a golden light or a reflective silver surface. The key is to visualize it as a permeable membrane that allows positive energy to flow in while deflecting any negative or overwhelming energies. Grounding exercises are another crucial tool in your arsenal. These help you stay connected to your own energy and the Earth's stabilizing force. A simple yet powerful technique is to imagine roots growing from your feet deep into the earth. Feel the earth's energy flowing up through these roots, anchoring and stabilizing you. Crystal allies can also provide energetic support. Carry black tourmaline or smoky quartz to help absorb and transmute negative energies. Rose quartz can offer a gentle, loving barrier against harsh vibrations. Remember, these protective measures aren't about cutting yourself off from the world. Rather, they're about creating a safe space for you to interact without becoming overwhelmed. Think of it as adjusting the volume on a radio. You're not turning it off, just tuning it to a level that's comfortable for you. Equally important is recognizing your need for alone time. As a chosen one, you require periods of solitude to recharge and process. Don't feel guilty about declining social invitations or stepping away from gatherings when you feel overwhelmed. This isn't selfishness, it's self-care, and it's essential for maintaining your energetic balance and fulfilling your purpose. The burden of spiritual responsibility. As a chosen one, you carry a unique burden, the weight of spiritual responsibility. This isn't something tangible that others can see, but you feel it constantly like an invisible backpack filled with the knowledge of your mission or purpose. This awareness can make it challenging to engage in what others consider normal social activities. While those around you might be focused on everyday concerns, you're often tuned into a higher frequency, aware of deeper truths or pressing spiritual matters. This disconnect can leave you feeling out of place, even alienated in social settings. You might find yourself struggling to relate to casual conversations or feeling frustrated by what you perceive as superficial interactions. It's not that you're superior, far from it. It's simply that your focus is often elsewhere on matters that others might not even be aware of. This spiritual knowledge or insight you carry can also be isolating. You might feel reluctant to share your thoughts or experiences, fearing that others won't understand or might judge you. This can lead to a sense of loneliness, even when surrounded by people. Moreover, you might feel a constant pull towards your spiritual work or mission, making it difficult to fully engage in social situations. Part of you is always alert, always listening for guidance or signs related to your purpose. This split attention can make you seem distracted or aloof to others, further complicating your social interactions. Recognizing this aspect of your journey is crucial. It's not about rejecting social connections, but about understanding why they might be challenging and finding ways to bridge the gap between your spiritual awareness and everyday interactions. 
vibrational mismatch. Another factor that contributes to your difficulty in crowded spaces is what we might call a vibrational mismatch. This concept is rooted in the understanding that everything in the universe, including human beings, vibrates at certain frequencies. As a chosen one, you often operate at a higher vibrational frequency than those around you. This is the matter of superiority, but rather a difference in energetic state. Your heightened spiritual awareness and connection to your purpose naturally elevate your vibrational frequency. When you enter a crowded space, you're suddenly surrounded by a multitude of different frequencies. Many of these may be lower than your own, creating a sense of discord or discomfort. It's like trying to tune a radio to a specific station, but constantly picking up static from other channels. This vibrational mismatch can manifest in various ways. You might feel physically uncomfortable, experiencing symptoms like headaches or fatigue. Emotionally, you could feel irritable or anxious without apparent reason. Mentally, you might find it difficult to concentrate or feel like your thoughts are muddled. Moreover, Prolonged exposure to lower vibrational energies can temporarily lower your own frequency. This might leave you feeling drained, pessimistic, or disconnected from your spiritual path. Understanding this concept can help you navigate social situations more effectively. It doesn't mean you should avoid all contact with others. Instead, it's about recognizing when you're experiencing a vibrational mismatch and taking steps to protect and maintain your energy. This might involve shorter social interactions, regular breaks to recharge, or seeking out environments and individuals that resonate more closely with your frequency. Psychic Overload For many chosen ones, the challenge of being in crowded spaces goes beyond physical discomfort or emotional overwhelm. You might also experience what we can term psychic overload. This occurs when your intuitive abilities, which are often more developed than those of the average person, go into overdrive in bustling environments. In a crowd, you're not just seeing and hearing the people around you, you're also picking up on their thoughts, emotions, and energetic imprints. It's like having a constant stream of information flooding your senses, much of which isn't even visible to others. This psychic input can be overwhelming, you might find yourself knowing things about strangers that they haven't shared, sensing the emotional undercurrents in a room, or even glimpsing fragments of others, past or future. While these abilities can be gifts in the right context, in a crowded space they can lead to information overload. Managing this psychic input is crucial for your well-being. One effective strategy is to practice mental filtering, Visualize a screen or filter in your mind that allows you to consciously choose what information you receive. This doesn't mean shutting down your intuitive abilities entirely, but rather exercising more control over them. Grounding exercises can also help manage psychic overload. Regular meditation or mindfulness practices can strengthen your ability to center yourself amidst chaotic energies. Additionally, Carrying or wearing protective stones like black tourmaline or amethyst can help deflect unwanted psychic energy. Remember, your intuitive abilities are a powerful tool on your spiritual journey. Learning to manage them effectively in social situations is an important part of your growth as a chosen one. The need for meaningful connections. Despite the challenges of being around large groups, it's important to recognize that as a chosen one, you still have a deep need for connection. However, your approach to relationships often differs from the norm. You tend to prioritize quality over quantity in your interactions. For you, meaningful connections are essential. Surface-level chit-chat or purely social gatherings often leave you feeling empty or drained. Instead, you crave deep, authentic exchanges that touch on matters of the soul. You're drawn to conversations about life's big questions, spiritual experiences, or personal growth. This preference for depth can make it challenging to find like-minded individuals in everyday settings. You might feel out of place at casual social gatherings, struggling to engage in what you perceive as superficial dialogue. This can lead to feelings of isolation or being misunderstood. However, it's crucial to remember that meaningful connections are out there. 
other chosen ones, spiritual seekers, and open-minded individuals who resonate with your frequency do exist. The key is to be patient and selective in your social interactions. Consider seeking out spaces or groups aligned with your interests and values. Spiritual workshops, meditation groups, or holistic healing centers can be great places to meet kindred spirits. Online communities can also provide a platform for connecting with like-minded individuals from around the world. Remember, it's not about having a large social circle, but about cultivating relationships that nourish your soul and support your spiritual journey. Even a few deep, authentic connections can provide the sense of belonging and understanding that you crave. Spiritual growth and solitude. As a chosen one, you'll often find that solitude plays a crucial role in your spiritual growth. While connection is important, periods of isolation are equally vital for your development and the fulfillment of your purpose. In solitude, you have the space to dive deep into your inner world, to listen to the whispers of your soul without the distractions of external energies. It's in these quiet moments that you often receive the most profound insights, guidance, or inspiration related to your spiritual path. Moreover, many spiritual practices that are essential to your growth, meditation, prayer, energy work, or channeling, are often best performed in solitude. These practices allow you to raise your vibration, cleanse your energy, and align more closely with your higher self or spiritual guides. However, it's important to strike a balance between solitude and social interaction. Too much isolation can lead to feelings of disconnection or hinder your ability to fulfill your mission, which often involves interacting with and helping others in some capacity. The key is to view solitude not as a retreat from the world, but as a necessary part of your spiritual rhythm. Think of it as a pendulum swing periods of engagement followed by periods of withdrawal and introspection. This cycle allows you to integrate your experiences, recharge your energy, and prepare for your next phase of growth or service. Creating a sacred space in your home can be immensely helpful. This doesn't have to be an entire room. Even a small corner dedicated to your spiritual practice can serve as a sanctuary where you can retreat and recharge when needed. Coping mechanisms for chosen ones. Navigating the world as a chosen one requires a toolkit of coping mechanisms. These strategies can help you maintain your balance and fulfill your purpose while interacting with the wider world. Grounding is a fundamental skill for chosen ones. This involves connecting your energy with the earth, helping you stay centered and present. A simple yet effective grounding technique is to visualize roots growing from your feet deep into the earth. Feel the stable, nurturing energy of the earth flowing up through these roots and coring you. Energy cleansing rituals are another crucial tool. After being in crowded spaces or engaging in intense interactions, it's important to clear any residual energies you may have picked up. This could involve smudging with sage, taking a salt bath, or using visualization techniques to release unwanted energy. Creating and maintaining sacred spaces is also vital. This doesn't have to be elaborate, even a small altar in a quiet corner of your home can serve as a powerful anchor for your energy. Fill this space with objects that hold spiritual significance for you, crystals, sacred texts, or meaningful symbols. Mindfulness practices can help you stay present and centered, even in challenging environments. Regular meditation can strengthen your ability to observe your thoughts and emotions without getting caught up in them. Remember, these coping mechanisms are not about hiding from the world or avoiding your mission. Rather, they're tools that allow you to engage more effectively, maintaining your energy and focus as you navigate your unique path as a chosen one. The evolution of a chosen one's social life. As you progress on your spiritual journey, you'll likely find that your approach to social interactions evolves. This isn't about becoming a hermit or completely withdrawing from society. Rather, it's about learning to navigate social situations in a way that honors your needs and purpose as a chosen one. Initially, you might struggle with feelings of alienation or overwhelm in social settings. However, with time and practice, you can develop strategies to engage more comfortably. 
This might involve setting clear boundaries, taking regular breaks during social events, or learning to shield your energy effectively. Building a supportive community becomes crucial. This doesn't necessarily mean a large social circle, but rather a select group of individuals who understand and respect your path. These might be other chosen ones, spiritual seekers, or simply open-minded friends who accept you as you are. You'll also learn to discern which social interactions are truly beneficial for you. Not every invitation needs to be accepted, and it's okay to be selective about where you spend your energy. Focus on engagements that align with your values and support your spiritual growth. As you become more comfortable with your identity as a chosen one, you might find yourself naturally drawn to situations where you can fulfill your purpose. This could involve teaching, healing, or simply being a compassionate presence for others. Remember, your unique perspective is valuable. While large gatherings might still be challenging, you'll likely find that your one-on-one -on -one interactions become deeper and more meaningful. Embrace this evolution, recognizing that your changing social patterns are a reflection of your spiritual growth. Misconceptions and judgments. As a chosen one, you may often face misconceptions and judgments from those who don't understand your path. Your need for solitude or difficulty in crowded spaces might be misinterpreted as antisocial behavior or aloofness. It's important to address these misunderstandings, both for your own peace of mind and to educate others. Firstly, recognize that labels like antisocial or loma don't accurately describe your experience. Your selective interaction isn't about rejecting others, but about managing your energy and staying true to your purpose. It's a conscious choice, not a fear-based withdrawal. There's a significant difference between isolating yourself and practicing selective interaction. Isolation implies cutting yourself off from all contact, which isn't healthy or beneficial for anyone, chosen one or not. Selective interaction, on the other hand, means being mindful about your social engagements, choosing quality over quantity. When faced with judgments or misunderstandings, it can be helpful to explain your needs calmly and clearly. You don't owe anyone a detailed explanation of your spiritual path, but sharing a bit about your sensitivity or need for recharge time can help others understand your behavior better. Educating others about the concept of chosen ones and their unique challenges can also be beneficial. This doesn't mean forcing your beliefs on others, but rather offering a perspective they might not have considered before. Many people are more understanding when they have context for behaviors they initially found puzzling. Remember, you're not obligated to change yourself to fit others' expectations. Your path as a chosen one is valid, and it's okay to prioritize your spiritual well-being. At the same time, be open to genuine connections and opportunities for growth that social interactions can provide. Embrace your need for solitude and meaningful connections. Honor your energy needs and don't be afraid to set boundaries. At the same time, remain open to the growth opportunities that social interactions can provide. Your path is about finding balance between solitude and connection, between your spiritual mission and everyday life. To all the chosen ones watching, know that you're not alone. Your experiences are valid and your presence in this world is important. Trust in your journey, honor your needs, and continue to shine your light, even when it feels challenging. If this video resonated with you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more spiritual insights. We'd love to hear about your experiences as a chosen one in the comments below. How do you navigate crowded spaces? What strategies have you found helpful? Let me know down in the comments section below.